In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by the Australian Sports Sedan Association and the Grunt Performance Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. Welcome once again to another edition of In Pit Lane, coming to you via Facebook Live on the In Pit Lane YouTube channel and inpitlane.com and on delay Friday night 6.30 and late on Saturday nights on C31 Melbourne. Coming up this weekend, something very exciting. I've seen a lot of racetracks closed down in Australia over the years, but I've seldom ever seen any new ones opening this week at uh, South Australia at Tail and Bend. The Bend will open a brand new race circuit and our guest tonight will be racing there in the sports sedans in his, uh, re reacquainting himself with his Saab Chev V8, that's Thomas Randall. Of course, Thomas was in action over the weekend down at Simmons Plains as well in the Super 2 Series and we'll catch up with him all about that as well. Also, we've got some great live music coming up for you from Melbourne singer-songwriter Lucy, but big weekend in motorsport locally and internationally. Let's find out what happened. This is the In Pit Lane Motorsport News. Time attack is a sort of lap sprint on steroids. Like hill climbs or drag racing, here speed is king. No wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, no pit stop strategies, just speed. Extreme, no compromise, speed. It's Friday, a normal working day in Melbourne, Australia, and yet the track is filling up fast. There's plenty of cars and a surprisingly large turnout of spectators. And they're young. Time Attack is a motorsport discipline that has succeeded where many other forms of motorsport have so dismally failed. Time Attack is cool. And that's not been lost on companies keen to develop the youth market, like local high-performance lubrication and additives company, New I think, I mean, us being that rather youthful, edgy type company, um, we're big into the social aspect of this, so certainly community engagement in both street type cars and race type cars. So we have a real mix of, some of these cars are driven on the road and on the racetrack as well. So we've got a nice connection between both street community feel, people meet up and, and have lunches together and there's just a lot of engagement total. Whereas I think in some of the traditional motorsports, you know, they, um, they've kind of been in a bit of a club and they've done their own thing for the same sort of thing for many years, but possibly haven't evolved a lot um, and maybe not as welcoming for some of the youth. So this here is really about bringing everyone together and having a really good time. So, And it's great as a company that we can do that and support. The cars of Time Attack are as diverse as its audience. High tech, all wheel drive, turbocharged racers with wild aero appendages and huge power outputs. Garth Walden drives one of the fastest. The Evo 9 has a 2.2 litre engine boosted by a Borg Warner EFR turbo that pushes out around 1000 horsepower at 40 psi of boost. Yes, 40 psi of boost. And there's some pretty advanced aero, all wheel drive and even a dose of nitrous. And this machine has set world records at three World Time Attack Championships at Sydney Motorsport Park. Uh, it started life as an Evo 9, Mitsubishi Evo 9 and then uh... Obviously, there's a massive upgrade with the aero packages, um, around about 1,000 horsepower. Um, the car it runs nitrous on, on, on some days, on all days. Um, you know, six-speed sequential gearbox on paddle shift. So there's a lot of modifications, but it's still, our car's a little bit old, old school in terms of time attack rules now. That's why it doesn't really run too often. Um, it still runs a standard Evo chassis, where most of the later model time attack cars, the new generation, are all uh, space frame, tubular frame, Chassis where they can get the weight out of it and run different uh, suspension geometry to obviously optimise that. So from someone who comes from a circuit racing background, for what's, the, what's the attraction of this? It's funny you say that. Um, it, the attraction is that they're fast, they have a lot of power, a lot of aero. You've got one lap to do it in. 
um, the tyre's good for one lap. So when, you, when you're able to jump in a car and get told, you know, no holes barred, drive as fast as you possibly can. Um, you know, there's no conserving tyre, no conserving fuel, not race anyone, it's like a qualifying lap, but you only get one lap. It's, that's, that's the excitement that you are, you know, you, you have to put everything on the line, you have to drive 10 tenths, you can't, you can't underdrive it, you can't overdrive it. It, we've seen the World Time attack in Sydney at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park and tracks very big crowds. Obviously, uh, it's, it's very popular up there. Not quite the same down here. Do you think that it's going to be something that's going to spread around Australia? Um, oh, to be honest, I think, yeah, obviously World Time attack is the world stage event and it's a big event. Um, we get cars from all over the world. I think on a price point, you can only have one big event a year. Um, these cars really can't, if you start doing two or three events a year, what it costs to keep the car on the road to do those minimal laps is, is quite expensive because um, you can't test and the more, the more laps you do, the more, the more kilometres. The, the engines don't last, the, the gearboxes don't last, the aero doesn't last. So you, you need to, um, I think one event a year is quite good. But when you look at you know, three or four events around a year for like open class and, and, and street class, that's that's fantastic. I think those cars have got a little bit more uh, buffer where they can do more laps. So I think you'll find, like here at Big Time Attack, the open and street class is quite big um, and not many pro class cars. It took only one session for Walter to set the fastest lap of the day with a lap time of 1 minute 25.5367 seconds, just over one second shy of the track's outright lap record held by Simon Will's Formula Holden and a good five seconds faster than a V8 supercar. IndyCar returned to the over with a spectacular night race at Phoenix Speedway. In the end, the race was a thriller as Joseph Newgarden charged from fourth to first in the closing six laps to take the win from an impressive Robert Wickens in his IndyCar oval racing debut. Australia's willpower led for a race high 80 laps before running wide into the marbles and hitting the wall, continuing his run of bad luck. Kyle Busch returned to the winner's list with victory in the latest round of the NASCAR Monster Energy Series at Texas Motor Speedway. Busch took the lead late in the race, moving past Kevin Harvick to take his first win of the season. The tough Texas track took its toll on tyres in a brilliant piece of alliteration as Martin Truex Jr. hit the wall after a tyre failure early in the race. Kyle Larson suffered the same fate on lap 128 while Ryan Newman also was put out of the race to bring out the late race restart that helped push to his win. Super GT is back and so it seems is Honda. Honda took a 1-2 finish at the opening round of the season at Yokohama on the weekend with Kuti Sakakoshi and Takashi Kagari taking the win from Naoki Yamamoto and Jensen Button making his Super GT full-time series debut. Reigning champions Rio Hirakawa and New Zealand driver Nick Cassidy completed the podium. Four wide drag racing made his debut at the expanded Las Vegas drag strip with Steve Torrance taking the victory in top fuel. JR Todd took out the funny car final over Jack Beckman while the pro stock shootout saw Vincent Nobile take his 11th victory at the strip as Camaros dominated once again. Yeah, still not sure about four-wide drag racing. It is what it is, however. Well, we're going to take a break now for our viewers on Channel 31, but when we come back, we'll be joined by Falcon Super 2, Super 2 driver Thomas Randall. You're watching In Pit Lane, Channel 31. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And for those of you watching us live on Facebook or via YouTube or inpitlane.com, thanks for watching us. Now, just to let you know that the Australian Sports Day and Association, they're, the, they're proud sponsors of this program. I think they're fairly proud. They're certainly proud of what's coming up next week, next Wednesday, in fact, on the 18th of April at Grunt Performance. They're having uh, their, their meeting. And if you'd like to uh, head out there, they'd be more than happy to... Uh, to have you come along and in fact in pit lane will be there along with a camera as well to show you some of the cool cars in the grunt workshop meet the drivers and the teams from the grunt performance victorian sports Sedan championship the meeting starts at 7 30 for a barbecue dinner and there's a workshop tour so if you want to go along as i said um, head to uh, head to their website www.sportsedans.com.au uh, check it out, contact them and let them know. I'm sure they'd be very happy to uh, to see people, even if you don't race a sports sedan, if you're from another category, or improved production, you're thinking of moving up to sports sedans, which a few people have done. 
head out and uh, talk to the guys from the Australian Sports Sedan Association. And uh, head to their, to their uh, meeting at Grunt Performance, the uh, workshop next week, as I said, uh, on the 18th of April. And also remember the, uh, the, the Grunt Performance Victorian Sports Sedan Championships, which will be coming up at Phillip Island on the weekend of May the 5th and 6th. And, of course, in Pit Lane, we'd like to thank the Australian Sports Dan Association Victoria branch for their support of In Pit Lane. Well, somebody who knows all about sports dance is going to join us in a moment, and that's uh, Thomas Randall. So we'll just, uh, we'll just get ready to say hello to our friends at Channel 31 again, and then we'll continue. So, uh, Pete, we, uh, how are we doing this? Are you going to count down or shall I? Five seconds. Pete's counting down. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, last weekend, of course, uh, down at Simmons Plains in Tasmania were the uh, V8 supercars and also was the development series, now known as Super 2, everything super in the world of supercars. And our guest tonight was uh, was competing. He had a, had a much better run than he did in the opening round in Adelaide. We'll ask him all about that in a moment. And he's not resting his laurels there because, as I said at the opening of the show, coming up this weekend in Tail and Bend, South Australia, one of the most exciting things to come by local motorsport in well well over a decade and that is the opening of the bend it's an amazing circuit at tail and bend and we'll be asking him about that he'll be competing in the, the national sports dance series in his father's uh, saab v8 chev that he's uh, that he drove some quite some time ago but right now let's welcome back to in pit lane thomas randall thomas welcome back thank you brett and i must say i'm a fan of the couch you are. You've, yeah. you've actually you've, you've spent some time on that. I actually think that you, you, I think probably you and, well, now that you're in here, you would now be the only person who has actually been into every single studio we've done. Oh, what a privilege. Are, it, it is. I mean, you're part of the yeah, furniture. You're part I've of the been, family. I've been everywhere. It's great. You have, how you. old were you when you first came on? You were still in carts? About yeah, I think I was maybe 14. 14, 15, sounds yeah. about right. And then it was about three years ago that I was on here before I went overseas and now I'm back. I couldn't turn the offer down. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about overseas in just a moment. But let's um, recent history. Let's go back to the weekend. Your weekend at Simmons Plains. Uh, tell us how that all went. Pretty good. I mean, I was a little bit disappointed with the qualifying. Uh, I, I thought I, I could have got a bit of better, bit of a better result there. But again, it was another new circuit for me. Uh, not really too hard to learn. It really only has three proper braking areas. But um, the first sort of race was a bit of damage limitation, and my first race finish for the year and my first proper competitive race since October last year and then it sort of taught me the ways of racing these cars uh, because I'm not really used to to banging uh, other cars I mean open wheelers you touch wheels and things can go quite south and the sports and I don't really like uh, putting a scratch on that uh, but the, the first race taught me a fair bit and then in the second race I uh, pretty much uh, muddled up the start I uh, went back to second last and then uh, in a safety car free race I managed to get back up to 12th and did a little bit more uh, panel rubbing and then the final race moved up from 11th to 8th so I think overall the the speed uh, was was pretty good I can need to, need to work a little bit more but to be battling with a, a few guys that you know I've got some enduro drives later in the year and uh, we kept it clean and yeah it was nice to finish the round obviously because as you say, you're coming from a completely different background. I mean, you, you won the Toyota Racing Series in New Zealand in open wheelers. You then raced open wheelers in Europe. You raced LMP3 cars. Um, very different from, even the sports sedan is very different from the from the supercars. I mean, how long do you think it will take you to, until you're sort of totally comfortable in the, that sort of car? It's a hard question. I'm not really quite sure. I mean, I've only had two test days in, in, the, in the supercar plus the the day and a half in Adelaide and now one full round but uh, it's a hard answer uh, Brett um, but I think that the, obviously the more mileage that I do in the car it helps and the more racing mileage as well uh, really will continue to help speed up that process uh, but also driving different cars including the, the sports sedan which you mentioned um, just keeping my eye in and I hadn't been in a car uh, since uh, Adelaide when I got to Tasmania so you, when you first get out you know, things are a bit rusty and I was even in a different uh, chassis at, at Simmons Plains after the crash at Adelaide so I think the biggest thing is trying to understand the tyre and that's something that's helped you know, over the last few years I've driven lots of different cars that have been on different tyre compounds uh, and at the end of the day that's what makes contact with the road. 
the other thing that would be good is you said you're your first time at the at, the, at that particular track, but you you basically spent the last couple of years doing that regularly. I mean, as you've been driving around Europe, you're all, you, you you're always going to a new circuit, and you have to learn that. Is there a secret? I mean, for young drivers out there, anybody coming through, what's the secret to to learning a track? Is is it just a matter of getting out there and and doing it like by rote lap after lap after lap, or are there tips that can sort of you know fast track that learning process? Can't give away secrets here, Brett. <laughs> no, I, in honesty, I think one of the major things is I do a bit on the simulator, a fair bit on the simulator. Um, I get the, the track that I'm going to go to and that really helps sort of know how the corners go and also in your head when you arrive at the circuit, at least when you're on the track, you go, oh yeah, I know which way this corner goes. Uh, and another big aspect which I've sort of learned over the years is each corner that you're uh, coming to, you can sort of relate that to a corner that you've seen before. Um, you know, I mean, there's pl plenty of hairpins at, at different tracks and it doesn't, I don't believe it takes that long to learn a circuit. I mean, every sort of track has their own um, special uh, parts to it, uh, but certainly having to learn so many tracks overseas in such a short space of time. Again, it's like being on different tyre compounds, you know, when, when I get to new tracks, for example, Perth will be another new track for me. So, yeah, I've just got to learn it as quick as I can. It was interesting you came out and said you you won the Toyota Racing Series. Now, that has become sort of established as as basically a, a proving ground for some of the world's best young open wheel drivers. You took on some some people that you beat that you know are going to be in Formula One within the next three to four years, if, if that long. You've made the decision to come back to Australia and race, in, um, and race in supercars. Why that decision? Why come back to Australia and not stay and stick it out in Europe? Uh, I mean, initially I would have loved to stick it out in Europe. Uh, one, of, one of the biggest things is the budget, obviously. Uh, another aspect is being away from, from your family, um, but the budget is, is, is mainly the, the biggest uh, topic that's talked about. I mean, I've always believed that you need to have the talent and I've always wanted to try and get there on merit, uh, but at the end of every year, it just sort of seemed like the same scenario where you get teams emailing you saying, hey, we want you in our team, we think you're really good. Oh yeah, so you know, how much? And then it's X amount of euros or US dollars or, or what have you. And I just didn't have that sort of budget. And I just felt like we were sort of going around in circles. And by the end of last year, I wasn't really sure what to do. I went over to America and, and did an endurance race there and see if there were any opportunities there, which unfortunately they weren't, there weren't. Uh, but when I got back to Australia, I had a meeting with my dad and my manager. And while I was gone, uh, Tim Edwards had been in contact with my manager, Chris, and said that we've had an engineering meeting. and. Uh, we want Thomas to be our Super 2 driver, our sole Super 2 driver. And, you know, th those phone calls don't come around too often. So I'm just trying to maximise the most out of that. Well, we're going to find out about uh, not just coming back to Australia, but also um, your plans for this weekend as well, as we said, at, at the at Tail and Bend, which is very exciting. So we'll find out more about that in a moment. But uh, for Channel 31 viewers, we're going to take a break once again. When we come back after that break, more with Thomas Randall, and also we're going to get some great music from, from local artist Lucy. That's when In Pit Lane returns on Channel 31 right after this break. And for those of you watching us live at the moment, we'll continue our conversation with, uh, with Thomas Randall. Let's talk about the, your, your time overseas. Uh, where were you based overseas? Where were you staying? I was based in England, actually. So when I first uh, went overseas in 2016, it all actually happened very fast. And um, there was a lot of things we didn't consider. One of them especially was a visa, which turned out to be very important. Uh, but I ended up st uh, living with a guy named Marcus who... Uh, is an Australian actually and he's been based in, in England for the last 20 years and little did I know he was actually in the garage next to my dad at Phillip Island when he rolled the sports sedan <laughs> in 2006 helping out BRM in Formula 3 so very small world uh, but I was living in a, t in a village called Kenning Hall which was about five minutes from Snetterton Circuit which is not really an area to brag about uh, but the weather didn't really treat us that well um, but that's where I was living for the last two years and what sort of surprised me was the time it took to get to places like Spain or, or France. It's a two hour trip and here in Australia a two hour trip gets you to Brisbane. It, it was funny that you, you say that because I was listening to our friends at Midweek Motorsport on uh, Radio Show Limited, John Hindoff and, uh, and, and Nick Damon and those guys and they were talking about, John Hindoff was saying about how easy it was for, you know, for British fans to go to Spa 
for instance, or to go to the Nurburgring for the 24 hours, and I, I thought well, that can't be right. And I put it in, I put it into uh, into Google Maps from basically you know London to there, and it was shorter for them to drive to Nurburgring than it is for me to drive to say the, even the Bend it's crazy, in yeah. South Australia this weekend. It was like it was about a six and a half hour drive or something. Yeah. If you got a, once you basically once you got across the the, the the channel it was you know it was, it was like from here to Winton. Yeah, I mean in England is so small that you don't really fly between the country. You need to just drive. You know, it's like eight or nine hours from the bottom to the top. So a very painful drive, but not many people. Fly so what were the things that you found difficult there? I mean, were there were there aspects of the life that did you just because I mean you were very how old were you when you were, when you went over there? I went over when I was nineteen, and then. Yeah, the last two years. So I just turned 22 over the weekend, so I was there from 19 to 21. Oh, well, happy birthday for the weekend. Thank you very much. Uh, but the hardest things were initially was uh, doing everything that I, I didn't do. For example, stuff that my mum would do for me, <laughs> like cooking and washing, all those sort of basic things. And then it sort of came to um, fending for myself uh, at race meetings and defending myself in certain situations. You know, there were times when you'd want to be able to have a relative or you know your dad there um, and my dad and I have have had this very strong racing relationship I mean we started karts together and he ran me all the way up to Formula 4 until we quickly decided I'd go over to British F3 so it was that was probably one of the biggest differences uh, being so close to family in the racing to sort of being so far away uh, but nowadays with technology Facebook and uh, you can easily call them so it, it works out quite well well, I was actually at, at, at the Dream Motorsport headquarters, and you, I think you, I think you were at the Hungaro ring or somewhere. It was pouring with rain, and you rang your dad, and it was, uh, yeah. I think, I think, in fact, I think we were actually uh, FaceTiming it or something because I think they were, you, you were showing us around. And the technology is incredible now that you can sit in the, you know, you're over the other side of the world at the Hungaro ring, sort of saying, "Now look at look at the conditions. We I've got a race in." Yeah, I think one of the best things was on my 21st birthday. I got a video message from you, Brett, that my sister put together in a compilation. That that was up there as one of the highlights, I it, think. Look, it's, it's my pleasure. The, 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 bill, the invoice is in the mail <laughs> next. For 20, 21 days is, is the limit. So stay with us. We'll come back for our Channel 31 and we'll talk about going to the bend on the weekend. But right now, for all of our viewers at home, as you know, every week on In Pit Lane, we love to have live music. And tonight, joining us live in the studio is Lucy. She's a Melbourne singer-songwriter. And uh, we'll tell you all this later, but she's going to be playing next Wednesday night, actually, at the, uh, the junction in Kew. Um, I imagine there's a venue there. It's not just the... She, I don't think she's busking or something, but who knows? But um, anyway, this is right now. Let's... Um, the, now, I'm not sure... We, she's taking... A, right now, we're going to catch up. Yes, this is her song. This is called... Brunswick Bitch. Scented candles bless the inventor of incense. The straper gets to use the litter tray. The scent is so intense. The landlord's coming round today. We pray they don't evict us. We're sure they'll let us stay. If it still smells like eucalyptus, you said my house was shit. Like living in a slum. Called me a Brunswick bitch. You did. But you live with your mom, your mom, your mom, your mom now. I may be drunk at a Chinese buffet, but it's cheaper that way. A faux fur coat with a French beret, it's all day, every day. No sunscreen, no despair, no nicotine, but somehow we're okay. They let us slip through the cracks in the machine. It's all day, every day. Instead of counting sheep, I'm counting teeth that still need fillings. The dentist looks resigned and books me in for some more drillings. He blames a Diet Coke that says at least I'm not on crack. He's kind until my car declined and says I can't come back. My boyfriend has a car and I abuse it for its heating. He doesn't know I keep him round to keep my feet from freezing. 
I'm emotionally retreating, but it's really life or death. It could be worse, I say at least I don't do crystal meth. Stop liking all my posts, as though we're really close. I'm just a Brunswick bitch, you see, and you're already dead to me, to me, to me now. I may be drunk at a Chinese buffet, but it's cheaper that way. A faux fur coat with a French beret, it's all day, every day. Bad hair, bad skin, bad resume, but we're okay. We're calling home, they don't answer the phone. It's all day, every day. 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 Welcome back to In Pit Lane here on Channel 31 and live via uh, Facebook Live, the In Pit Lane YouTube channel and also inpitlane.com and we're with Thomas Randall. And Thomas, how much are you looking forward to the weekend? A brand new race circuit in Australia. Tell us about uh, the decision to come back and race the sports sedans at the Bend. Well, I think one of the main decisions was to keep me sharp for the, for the Super 2, but uh, the guys have done an enormous amount of work on the sports sedan. In fact, I think they're probably still working on it now. And... Um, I'm I'm super, I'm stoked. I mean, the the track looks phenomenal. It's it's world class. Unfortunately, not uh, Grade One spec for F1, but the, the facilities that look incredible. And I actually drove back from Adelaide with Dad about two months ago, and we stopped by the circuit, and they've put like a service station there as well. And it the facilities look great. And yeah, there's a, the test day on Thursday, which we're going to be on track for to yeah sort of shake down the car. And the amount of work that they've done to the car has has been phenomenal and we haven't raced it for that long that even the seat belts are out of date so yeah the interesting thing is it's not just you making the comeback i see tony ricciadello has entered as well i mean he hasn't raced for over a year in the alfetta gtv8 um all of the all of the stars a lot of the stars from the uh, grunt performance victorian sports sedan championship will be there michael robinson has a rebuilt car i think shane woodman is also heading over there of course jack perkins in john goulet's audi um, what uh, the, now? There's a number of tracks. The really big one is about seven kilometres. I believe the GT cars are running that, and you guys are running the so-called short track, which is what about four and a half kilometres or something. I wouldn't even I wouldn't call it a short track at all, no. but for, for them it is. It's about yeah, 4.95 kilometres, and the main straight alone is one kilometre. So it, I'm probably going to be nervous going to the braking zone on the first lap. But like you said about the category, it's super strong this year. I think there's about 29 or 30 cars entered, so it's. It's going to provide some great racing and yeah it's it's a mental track so what's the situation with you are you going to just come back for, for this particular race or are you going to do the whole national series the plan is to do the whole series unfortunately the final round clashes with the final round of the super two championship in newcastle so we won't be able to do that round but hopefully we can get enough points that we won't need to do it but you, you just don't know i mean Hopefully, yeah, hopefully the car is strong. Island magic is a lot more important than some silly street race around Newcastle. I mean, who, want to go, who wants to go to Newcastle anyway? Sorry, Newcastle people. I'm sure it's a lovely place when it's open. But, um, but yeah, so this, well, this is good news, I mean, for, for the sports dance to see you back because that, car, that, is a serious, that is a seriously fast car. So it, at the very least, it gives, uh, gives young Jack Perkins someone to play with in the Audi. And Tony, I mean, I'd love to have a 3-0 battle again like we did a few years ago. I mean, our cars, all three cars at some points of that championship weren't reliable. Probably mine, the most unreliable. Um, but the guys have put a lot more time and effort into this. I mean, three years ago when we ran it, uh, the guys were also running uh, a Formula Ford car and two F4s, where now it's Dad's just preparing Rusty's cars uh, and the sports sedan, which in the last sort of six, seven months... Yeah, he's, he's put a lot of time into that car. Well, it's good to, good to see you back in the sports dance and also the long-term plan in the supercars, the relationship with Tickford Racing. Um, have you spoken about uh, what might happen after this year or is it just a, are you just looking at this year and then you'll decide after that? Yeah, I'm not really sure at the moment. I know what I'd like to do, uh, but I don't feel like I'm ready for it yet. 
I mean, I know there's obviously the, the wild card opportunities, which other drivers are looking at. I mean, if I got asked tomorrow if I'd want to do one, I'd probably turn it down just because I don't feel like I'm ready yet. Uh, so I'll, I'll just see how I go. I mean, ta uh, Tasmania was the first round I have fully completed. Uh, so there's, there's a lot more learning to go. And I love working with the team. I love working with my engineer and the Sky Sands Falcon was, was quite strong there and I can't see why we can't be even stronger in, in Perth. Well, good luck for the rest of the year in the uh, in the supercars, but also with the sports and particularly this weekend at uh, at the Bend. It's a, it's a great circuit. We'd love to get a, get across there. As I said earlier, it was uh, just didn't didn't happen to get across there, but we will get across at some stage to have a look at it and to show you one in pit lane. But for now, Thomas Randall, thanks for joining us once again on in pit lane. Thanks for having me, Brett. And thank you to you at home. Now, um, I hope you'll be joining us next week on the program when we'll, uh, we'll talk about what happened at, uh, at the Bend and all sorts of other things as well. But to take us out tonight, as we said, our guest is Lucy and you can catch up with her at... I'm getting, I'm getting a, there, there. I'm just getting that from Pete, which means I've got to move now. So to take us out, this is Lucy. You can catch up with her at the, uh, at the junction in queue on the 18th of April. But right now she takes us out with her song, Layers. So from all of us here, on Inpit Lane, good night. She wakes early when she feels it again. Picks up her paintbrush, tries to keep her steady hand. There's no pain, she's ready for the end. It's the last time she understands. Laying all her pieces out, smoothing all the creases out with every stroke. She disappears till every shade is weighed with ears. Dust settles on the skin like freckles on the chin. The color cracks as she can see it clearly. It's nobody's fault. She fills out the line, feels she's just begun. It's looking fine, but it's nearly done. Needs more pink below the mouth. Looks nothing like it started out. She adds another strand of hair. She makes it tuck. She's lying to her.